It's Platt, and today we head over the pond. That's next on Platt's Beer of the Week. All right, so the particular beer we have today is Murphy's Imported Stout. Uh, comes to us from the Murphy Brewery in Cork, Ireland. Now, a little background into the brewery. Um, kind of fascinating story, just maybe my weird head, but I found, found their little history uh, quite interesting. The brewery was founded in 1856 by an element, gentleman named James Murphy. Now, James probably got in the brewing business a lot different than most other people. Um, you know, when we kind of review some of these beers, talk about some of these breweries, especially here in the U.S., a lot of times it is a guy who started off as a home brewer, had the dream, moved on. Sometimes we find people that you know, start working at a brewery, then decide they want to go pro. Maybe even some people that inherit a brewery from mom and dad. James' path was slight, bit, slight bit different. James was the oldest of 15 children. Uh, I guess Mr. Murphy didn't have a hobby. Leave that poor woman alone, 15 kids. Well, anyway, James was the oldest, and he inherited part of the family business. And the family business was distilling. Yes, he came from a distilling background, which, again, being in the alcoholic beverage business, having that as a family business, what a great way to learn the business. But you kind of would think, well, God, why would you want to leave that? That seems pretty cool. But I guess James' passion was somewhere else to the point where he ended up selling his part of the distillery to pay for his brewery. And he ended up taking four brothers with him to begin a brewery. Uh, the process actually began in 1854 when they bought a hospital building or part of a hospital there in Cork and started building out the brewery, which they called the Ladies' Well or Ladies Well Brewery. Uh, I guess on the side of the hospital was something referred to as the Holy Well, which had uh, this magical water, or this great, you know, pure water. And, and they talk about the water even today in their, uh, in their advertisements for the beer water, how, you know, the beer add, you know, the quality of the water adds to the quality of beer, adds to head retention, stuff like that. And if you're a home brewer, you do understand the importance of high quality water so the the, the story kind of works in with the uh, actual brewing of the beer um like i said they, they bought the hospital in 1854 built out the brewery in 1856 they started selling beer to the public um james ran the brewery for pretty much the next 40 years until his passing in 1897 now when he passed in 1897 they were doing about a hundred thousand barrels of production a year which May not seem like a lot when we're talking about your Anheuser Busch, Heineken's of the world, what have you, but there's a lot of domestic craft brewers in the U.S. that would love to do that kind of production. To think that was 125 years ago, pretty impressive, just to say the least. Um, as far as the modern history of the brewery, uh, Murphy's was purchased by Heineken in 1983. Murphy's had just started kind of expanding internationally. Uh, they just made it to the U.S. in 1979. Um, and in the 80s and 90s, Heineken decided we're really going to push this brand. Um, that was going to be their portfolio's answer to Guinness. And uh, it kind of makes sense in the sense that a lot of times, you know, Anheuser-Busch will have their portfolio, Miller Coors will have their portfolio, Carlsberg Group, Heineken, Group of Modelo. And so... Well, if they have, let's say, they, if they have Corona, I got to pick up Modelo. Well, if they have Foster's Lager, I got to pick up Victoria. And so I guess Heineken made the decision, we're going to push Murphy's Irish Stout as our Guinness alternative. Uh, they started doing things like sponsoring Irish Rugby Leagues, uh, sponsored the Irish Open, which would be a golf tournament. Uh, they even had some commercials for a while. Um, unfortunately, um, it just never worked for them. Uh, it's hard to beat out Guinness Guinness, and Guinness is one of those brands that kind of has a lockdown on their country and the style, uh, maybe more than any, if you think about, maybe more than any other brand and style. Like, if you think about the Mexican lager category, yeah, Corona's big, but there's also Ducati, there's also Modelo, there's other, you know, Dos Equis that are up there. Even a brand like Foster's, which, again, internationally, uh, maybe more well-known, but uh, Carlson and Victoria Warburg, those are still major brands uh, to the point where 
I, I think outside the U.S. maybe, I think internationally those brands will probably be more recognized than that. But Guinness is <laughs> Guinness. Um, Murphy's, besides making the imported stout, has a couple other beers. They do uh, Irish Red Ale, which I've had before, very nice beer. And then they do something, and I hope I'm pronouncing this right, Noweg, Noweg uh, beer. It is their Christmas beer, their seasonal. I presume it's a play on the word Noel. That's my guess on it. Uh, but they kind of keep it simple there. They don't really work too far out the bun, but um, they do have some other beers. Well, before we try this Murphy, so let's check out the stats. All right, so I thought today we would talk about, so I was talking about Guinness and how big Guinness is uh, internationally and in Ireland. I thought today I'd talk about the best Irish beers not named Guinness. Uh, at the time of this taping, we're about a little over a month or so away from St. Paddy's Day. Um, and more importantly, hopefully bars are starting to open up again. So I know you're thirsty, you want to try some different kind of stuff. Um, and again, to kind of break out of that uh, Guinness shell, I thought we'd talk about some of these other beers. Uh, the first beer is Kilkenny's Irish Cream Ale. Uh, really good beer, great creamy body, a lot of those roasted malted notes. Man, just a good combination of flavors, mouthfeel, just a good drinking beer, something you just really enjoy. Like it's a pleasurable beer. You're like, man, this is really good. Um, if you get a chance, check it out. Uh, nice little beer. Next is Smithwick's Red Ale. Um, this beer actually, its story goes all the way back to the 14th century. Red ales are great classic style. I don't think get enough nor notoriety today, especially at the beer festivals kind of things. But red ales are great to me. A great pub style. Beer, plenty of nice maltiness. Uh, Smithwick's is one of those beers where you could park me on a bar stool, just keep them coming. I'll I'll, <laughs> I'll let you know when. Uh, just a nice, easy drinking, good beer that just kind of goes down. It's just one of those beers you can just keep having and you just you just enjoy. Uh, third is uh, Harp Lager. Now a lot of you may know Harp as the other beer in a black and tan along with uh, Guinness Stout. Um, it is, I guess the best way I can quote is, is kind of think of it as Irish regular guy beer. It's that lighter uh, lager style, lighter in color, lighter in body, lager style beer. Um, if I was to send a Miller Lite, Bud Light drinker over to Ireland and I know I couldn't get a stout in them, I'd probably tell them Harp Lager is your beer. Uh, fourth is O'Hara's Pale Ale. Now, I've not tried their Pale Ale, but I've tried a couple of other beers. Really good brewery, uh, has a great name over there. Uh, the Pale Ale, if you go over to England, Ireland, Scotland, uh, over the pond, as they would say, the Pale Ale over there is different than what we have here. Most notably, they generally stick with the Noble Hops, which is a, just a different, they're more floral hops compared to the kind of piney, resiny hops we have here. Uh, these were, again, pub-style beers, you know, 150, 200 years ago. And the pale ale that we have in the States is based off those, but it, it's a little different. Just, But again, uh, this is one of those styles that's well-executed, just something you could just drink all day. They're, they're uh, ABV-wise, they're in the fours. Uh, again, a more sessionable-style beer. Great type of beer. Check it out. And last but not least, a very interesting beer. Uh, I think the style is unique. Um, I know why there's not a lot of them because it's it's a tough beer to pull off and it's probably a costly beer to pull off. And that is Porterhouse Brewing Oyster Stout. Uh, yes, real oysters are in the beer. And it's that brininess from the oysters that kind of adds a layer of flavor that you're just not expecting in beer. Uh, you know, we have things like peanut butter beer and raspberry beer. You're expecting that kind of sweetness, but brininess is not something you generally get on a beer. That's why this is really a unique type of beer. Uh, it's not one of those you're going to, you know, take a 12-er home and knock back. It's it's not like that at all. But again, if you get a chance, give it a try. Kind of expand your uh, palate a little bit. Well, enough about Irish beers. Let's drink an Irish beer. Now, you may hear a little rattling in the background. And Murphy's has one of those widgets. 
because it is carbonated with nitrous, so I can't get, there you go, there's that little widget. Um, Guinness, I can't remember which one, they don't do it now, it used to be in more Guinness cans, I can't remember uh, how they label it for their nitrous, but uh, I always thought that was a cool deal on this bartending. I love how that head kind of settles, you know, the black kind of rises up. Visually, I uh, find it appealing. Plenty of malt on the nose. Man, that's just a nice executed stout. Um, the maltiness is more of the kind of roasted coffee, less chocolatey and more kind of roasted coffee, cappuccino-ish. Um, the nitrous oak gives that more creamy mouthfeel, so it's not... This is not like a milk stout. You're not getting the cream from like lactose or whatever. It's from the nitrogen. But uh, again, the two kind of go go with each other. Uh, this beer, it's kind of got a dry finish to it. So I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily say this beer is for everybody. Again, my Bud Light Miller Light friends. I don't know if they're wanting to work up to this. Because again, it does have kind of a drier kind of finish to it. But as far as I'm concerned, man, this is just a nice executed stout. Um, it didn't, they didn't reinvent the wheel. Uh, this is not a peanut butter stout or anything like that, s'more stout. This is just a nice dry stout. And that being said, I, I can appreciate it. And I guess the best way I put it is, if I saw this, if this was side by side with Guinness and they had a deal on Murphy's, I'm going Murphy's, if it's the same, uh, uh, it's not far off from Guinness. Uh, it, it, again, I can understand why Heineken bought the brand to compete with Guinness because it's a comparable beer. Um, well, I'll execute though. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or beers that you'd like me to try, please leave them in the comment section or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Until next time, bottoms up.